Now I want to show you today what would be a, a traditional small town in Australia and what you might expect. This town is so good, they named it twice. We're entering into Lang Lang. So the first shop on this corner is Lang Lang Fish and Chips and pizzas. So I like the artwork on the side of this building actually. Um, fish and chips, uh, they're pretty good. It's just a standard single story. Uh, the sort of, all the way along the street here, you'll see this standard single story. This is very common in Australia, but they've done some nice artwork. So it kind of has a look of a double story fish and chip shop with some little, um, little railings on the top there. It's kind of cool. So we're only about, Maybe 25 minutes, maybe 20 minutes drive from Phillip Island. There's a sign there. And there's a uh, the Palace Hotel. This is the entrance to the town centre. So you've got the Palace Hotel here. It says uh, Kurumbura, Phillip Island, Nayora, the police, Druin Primary School, Community Centre and McDonald's Track. So you're going to find most small towns are going to have places to eat. Commonly, you're going to find a fish and chip shop. But the noise of these big sand trucks is not going to be too noisy. The other shop, almost every small town in Australia has, is a milk bar. Milk bar is a little bit like a, a corner shop or a small grocery store. G'day. Hi. How are you? So this is the traditional, often family owned, small independent. Um, this one, think is possibly owned by an Asian family because it sells fried rice noodles dumplings um, which is not also uncommon so little corner stores so I was right this actual this store is actually owned by a Chinese lady of Chinese family and got the usual sort of hardware and bits and pieces you'd expect to see uh, it's not a traditional milk bar Although it is in a sense, it sells all the uh, all the bare essentials that you'd need in a small town like this. It's quite a big milk bar actually. What do you think, Michelle? Knickknacks. Knick oh, video surveillance. So yes, the the milk bar itself is owned by a, a Chinese family from um, Jiangsu in China. If I got that right, Jiangsu, I think. And uh, so, thank you, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, for showing me around your store. So, another real common shop you're going to find in any high street, even in the smallest of towns generally, is the op shop or opportunity shop. This is like a, a second hand shop, sells all sort of second hand bits and pieces, recycled stuff. There's a little sign at the front there. We're most grateful for goods that are left here at the store, but please note that stuff that's left here outside of shop hours will be most likely stolen. Most small towns are going to have a pharmacy. See up here there's a car dealership or a, uh, a used car dealership. That's interesting. It's got a, an old ute. I think it's a Holden ute. Nice colour. It's a high-tech special vehicles so i didn't actually film james there i was chatting with him i should have filmed it maybe michelle's got a little a uh, little bit of a clip that's james um, him and his father own this high tech uh, they just sold that really nice little pickup there i thought it was an original color but it's actually not quite the original color i forget the name um, but there was a color in the, in the mid 70s that uh, the Utes were done in, but that's it's close but not quite. And they've sold that to a buyer in WA, sight unseen. So the guy's bought it and he's going to have it shipped over there for about $15,000 plus the shipping. So it's amazing people will buy uh, these old Utes like that without seeing them. But obviously, they take lots of photographs and share lots of information about it. So you're, you're buying it um, sight unseen. But um, he said he sold quite a few vehicles sight unseen. So people will buy vehicles that have been uh, modest renovation on them, tidied up. He sold a few up in Queensland. 
uh, this one going over to WA so it's pretty fascinating and you're gonna have a smattering of commercial buildings and residential buildings as well so all along this little high street and I'd say this high street is probably only about maybe three or four hundred meters long you've got a combination of retail there's a laundromat over there and residential living now this place I saw signposted from the main road driving out to Phillip Island this is auntie's place country crafts so this is a arts and crafts store just turn around and get a, a nice shot of it and this is a an antique shop not an op shop though technically a lot of the stuff is secondhand obviously because it's antiques so this is quite well signposted so it's obviously quite a well-known store auntie's place yes we are open all the usual bric-a-brac that you'd expect to see in a antique shop or oh, not just antiques because some of this stuff is clearly new so it's called sort of bric-a-brac i'm just going to cross over the road here the traffic has slowed down a little bit because over here this is quite interesting so it's the lang lang district historical society good day sir so a memorial statue here in the center they've also got this gun this gun let's have a little look at the, the history behind why there's a gun here in Lang Lang so a 25 pound QF quick firing gun the British designed the mark 225 pounder the gun had a maximum range of 13,400 yards uh, and a muzzle velocity of 1,700 feet per second at 518 meters per second. The type of shells used with these guns were HE smoke and BE and colored, star and AP chemicals and propaganda. This information was supplied by the original members of the 2nd 12th Australian Field Regiment of the 9th Division. The relocation of the refurbished gun was proudly undertaken by the members of the Kuwirup Lang Lang Rotary Club in 2006. So when they talk about the actual uh, the shells that we used and they're talking about star, uh, AP, chemical and propaganda, I'm guessing the latter, the propaganda one, were shells that were actually firing propaganda materials into perhaps um, uh, whoever they were at war with at the time so information leaflets propaganda leaflets were fired isn't that fascinating from these guns and they would land they would scatter the shells the propaganda material would scatter down uh, in the language of the troops that they were at war with now it's not all about war they also have here uh, this is a I think looking at it it's a clay pigeon firing device for shot practice so you can correct me if I'm wrong I think that's a, a peacetime clay pigeon device uh, let me know down below and this is a traditional old plow a little hand plow um, I think this one was probably pulled by a cow or a bullock so that's quite interesting the kids I saw up the park explained to me what Lang Lang meant. It's an old Aboriginal word for a clump of trees. So there's a little bit more information there about Lang Lang for you to read if you want to just pause the screen. Now a smaller town like this is unlikely to have, well it might have, but generally they're not going to have your Woolworths and Coles, which are your big, pretty much the only two supermarket chains throughout Australia, uh, apart from Audi. Uh, you're going to have an IGA, which is an independent, I think it stands for Independent Grocery Association. So this one, this town, Lang Lang has uh, an IGA. Go to the IGA. <laughs> IGA, good blokes there. Um, top of line people, they're real good. Oh, the fish works there. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. A butchers. Now, I'm so pleased they've got a butchers. So many of these towns now are not supporting their butchers well enough, so the butchers are closing down and moving into the supermarkets. So this looks to have a nice independent family-owned butchers so that's fantastic it's a busy little road it's 
So here is your IGA. This is the Lang Lang IGA, and it's actually got a liquor store in there as well. A place where people can buy their alcohol. So that's a, an, one unusual thing. I don't think there is an actual liquor store in this town, like an independent liquor store. Most towns are saying that. There are a few bars. Now we've got a few real estate agents. But interestingly, we've got a Tandoori. Tandoori Nights, N-I-T. E-S, so spelled slightly differently, but Tandoori Nights. That's an Indian restaurant. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And in Howler's, the brewing company. Now I did go in here yesterday and they're actually building, it's still under construction. They've got a, uh, an independent brewer brewing out the back here. Uh, the building's not built yet. They're brewing off site. So it's a nice little bar, serves good food. I believe it's got a um, some Mexican influence to the food they serve. You might have noticed, you may not have seen, but back at the centre of the high street, there was a post office, and the post office is closed, but they just moved it basically, so they still have a post office. It's just a little bit past, so we've got the Howlers, Howlers Brewing Company. They're building a brewery on the back. And next door to that, we've got another little cafe and the post office. Now just here, right at the end of the high street, right at the end of the high street, we've got a, a, a play park for kids. It's a nicely built play park. Three sort of teenage kids in there at the moment. So that's kind of cool. Got a little climbing wall. Okay, they've got a, uh, a little barbecue pit here. It's another thing pretty common in most towns. It's a little outdoor barbecue pit. And a little bit of a skate park. And also, you've got a couple of uh, pretty run down but, but usable tennis courts here. So that's not bad for the kids. Golf course. Yes, the, yeah, golf yeah, course. Yeah, golf course. Yeah, yeah. A Lang Lang golf course? Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit down the highway, down that way. I've never actually been there, but apparently it's one of it's, the best golf courses. Good, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, we'll check that out. So I've got to thank these kids. Give me some tips of places to see around Lang Lang. Uh, they're still at school, but they're just finishing their exam, so they've got a day off. I think it's like a study day or something. So it's cool. I like this old building here. This is the, where the brewery is going in. So you can see it's like a, a two story, but a, a narrow building, real, um, real character. Cause most of the buildings down the high street are single story. So it's unusual to have this sort of period building here. And I believe they're building out the back. Uh, so the, the brewing will be done on situ here, which would be great. Now I'm coming to the end of the high street here, the new post office. Got the usual post boxes here. Just a smattering of post boxes, not like we saw at the brew. And a cafe. Now this cafe is right on the end, and it actually caters for uh, vegetarian, uh, gluten intolerance food. So it's nice actually to see that there's uh, somebody giving that a go. Though it's right at the end of the high street, so once I walk past here, pretty much pretty much finished. So really then, if it's marked as gluten-free, it is gluten-free. I'm going to mark them as gluten-free, vegan or vegetarian. All right. And so that's a vegan custard tart. It is. That's tricky. Yes. So um, are you making all this stuff yourself? I'm making it all myself, yeah. My well, daughter and I. And well done I you. I also have a friend who's a chef, and she comes in a couple of days a week uh, and helps me as well. And what's your name? Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the name of cafe, Wendy Mays. That's me. Beautiful. <laughs> So this caters for vegan, any sort of intolerances really, people who are looking at gluten intolerance, you can get yeah. food here, yeah. delicious and food. So it's a milk, I do normal milk, skinny milk, like lactose free milk, uh, soy milk, um, milk. So that was really nice. That's uh, Wendy May. And bless her, she works really hard in there. She's got vegetarian, vegan, um, gluten free, 
she's got all the different milks there for coffees, cappuccinos, lattes. So you can get into Wendy, Wendy May at the end of uh, Lang Lang on the High Street, just near the post office. And you can check her out, share a bit of love and get in there. And she actually does uh, non-vegan foods as well. So if you've just got a, a group of friends and maybe one of you is vegetarian, one of you is vegan, Wendy's the place to go. Just about another probably 40, 50 yards past the end of the street, we've got a railway track. Now, I can probably guarantee that this railway track is not in use because there's no, there's no tracks going across the road. The young kids over here were telling me that uh, it's a nice walk down the railway track and there's a bridge down the end here, a place where they often sort of hang out. So another place that interests me on the high street is when you have an Indian restaurant in such a small community. So I'm just gonna pop in, oh, they're closed. <laughs> so um, we'll try and catch uh, the Indian restaurant maybe at another time. That's the bread shop, bakery and cafe on Lang Lang, also right next door to the, the Indian restaurant. And here is the butchers. Now this is what I was saying to you about. I'm guessing it's a family owned butchers. As, as I hoped, this is an uh, independent uh, butchers. This is Ben. Yeah, how long you had this place, Ben? Oh, about five years. Five years? Yeah. A guy that knows how to cut up me, no doubt. Yep. Yeah, not like the city. No, that's it. Yeah. Just where the real thing. In, in you know, cellophane packs and things. So I'm sure if I ask this guy for certain cuts, do you get um, whole carcasses in? Or yeah, whole get, carcasses, yeah. Yeah, uh, hind quarters of beef and things like that, or do you just get the whole, whole, whole bodies. Yep. You get the whole, yep. whole yep. beef, all right. So real traditional. So like I've said before, you've got to support these sort of places because without them we'll all be shopping in Woolworths and, and Coles. It's just gonna it's gonna deteriorate. So there you have it, that's Ben the Butcher. And uh, we'll definitely be checking that out. We're here for about 10 days or so, so um, we'll be able to pop back in there, get some meats off him. The meats here are all from local sources so you know the quality of the beef is going to be a lot better and as I keep saying there's another truck support your local stores support your local butchers support your local greengrocers and cafes um, there's a place for supermarkets there is but if you don't support these guys they will go out of business so please uh, this Christmas coming up buy everything from local sources. There's an endless train of these sand trucks going through. So I hope you've enjoyed that look around a small town in Australia. Lang Lang, great people, really quite a nice town. Nice and small, compact enough that you can get around it really quickly, but enough in there to keep you entertained. I'm actually going to do a live version of this same video. So I'd like to know maybe if in the comments you could let me know, do you like this sort of um, pre-prepared format or you prefer the live format? Uh, wait until you've seen both obviously before you decide. Another truck going by. Be good, share the love and we will see you very shortly. If you follow the road till it leads you back home find that the answer is yes.